It is time for our monthly update on all things, things film and music happening not just in Oklahoma City, but around the state of Oklahoma. I'm Dave Morris here in the Oklahoma's Video Studio, joined by these ladies. I'm surrounded by ladies here. Abby Curran from the Tulsa office. Uh, we have Tabasovsky from the Oklahoma Film and Music Office. And over here, just off camera, but on that set right there, we have Lauren Branch out of Tulsa. Lauren, hi. Hey, Lauren. <laughs> Things are going well, and Lauren will be performing uh, a song for us uh, towards the end of this interview. We're also going to ask her about some things that she's been involved with, a folk festival and South by Southwest. Uh, but first of all, back to this table, and uh, you just came from South by Southwest. I haven't been in a couple years. How did it go? You know, it went great. Um, it was my eighth year to be down there, which is wild. Time flies when you're having fun, I guess, in Austin. Um, but it went great. It was so our office was involved in a few different things. We were a part of the trade show. We hosted um, entrepreneurs, startups, and arts, organ or arts organizations from our area and went down for four days for the trade show. And then um, on Thursday, March 16th, we hosted 11 bands from the Tulsa area. So how was that? It went great. Because uh -huh. I remember being there and working with you, sure. oh, what, three or four years. Mm -hmm. It's been a while now when George Lang was with us as well. Mm -hmm. And you had the Buffalo Lounge, mm -hmm. which was a, may, maybe a similar concept of mm -hmm. Oklahoma-type musicians and mm -hmm. artists. Right. So, of course, Buffalo Lounge uh, still actually gets a lot of likes on Facebook, if you can believe it. But we haven't done it for about four years. But um, So, yeah, with the Buffalo Lounge being a statewide initiative um, and us kind of evolving from maybe moving away from that project and I moved from Oklahoma City to Tulsa to launch this Tulsa um, Office of Film, Music, Arts, and Culture. Okay. Um, so we did that about three years ago, and with that, the thought was, is, you know, with both sides of my office being very similar to the states of promoting my region as a viable source for film and music outside of the state, um, really South By was a big target for us. With my background with Buffalo Lounge, um, moved into that scenario to promote Tulsa musicians down there. Uh, Lauren Branch, as I mentioned, uh, out of the Tulsa area. You were at South By. How did it go? It was so fun. It was awesome. We went down there Wednesday night and then spent all day Thursday at the uh, bungalow on Rainy Street where we had uh, the Tulsa Boom Factory and just a bunch of artists and musicians hanging out. It was, it was awesome. It is a good scene to be surrounded by fellow musician creative types, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. And so we took down I mean, there's just so much talent here in Oklahoma of every genre. And so with 11 different bands to fill, uh, me and a music committee, we curated a really solid lineup. So this year we featured everybody from Americana country to dream, um, dream pop to hip hop, you know, to yeah, a little bit pop. of jazz. I have not heard of dream pop. Dream pop is a new thing. Okay. Um, so with 11 bands, we were, fe we were able to feature just a wide variety of different genres. So we featured, um, let's see, Lauren Barth, of course, and then um, for, our, for our Tulsa Boom Factory, Lauren Barth, uh, Mike D and the Stone Trio, Brand J, Nuns, The Ivy, which is Dream Pop, and then we um, headlined was uh, Travis Linville. Okay, very nice. Yeah. So then uh, later in the evening, we moved to the showcase, and that featured Casey Steven and The Midnight Sun, Wink Burcham, Broncho, Hansen, and then ended the night with Reverb. Pretty big lineup yeah, right there. it was great. Uh, Tava, just an example of music that's happening all over the state. Uh, could you kind of explain to us the the umbrella that the two offices fall in? I guess it's under the tourism umbrella, perhaps? Sure, sure. So our office, the Oklahoma Film and Music Office, as Abby said, um, we're uh, a state office under the Department of Tourism. Okay. And then, um, so there are multiple uh, divisions under this agency being Discover Oklahoma, State Parks, Oklahoma Today, and then we have a travel promotions um, department as well. And so the Film and Music Office, we promote obviously both for film and music um, and both in state and out of state. And then for Abby's office, as she said, um, is promoting more specifically the region, the regional artists and film initiatives and things out of Tulsa. So we uh, we work very well together. Um, I think that she is a great asset. Um, offshooting coming her coming from the state office when she worked with our office a few years ago I think that she's brought a lot of that experience and then just you know really 
fo really focusing on her region. I think it's fabulous. I think it's great for the state. Yeah, and there's so many, so many creative uh, people and so many great musicians up in that Tulsa area. It's nice oh, to have yeah. a, a city office that's focused on that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, and like Tava said, we work well together, not just with on the music side. You know, we travel to Folk Alliance together, um, but then the film side as well. So. Tava and her team really spearhead what we do on the film side when we go to Sundance or upcoming LA trip. And so we usually then help with those different events, either through sponsorship or just in-kind um, support. But so really it makes sense for both offices to work together. You mentioned Folk Alliance and Lauren performed there as well. What, what is, was Folk Alliance? So Folk Alliance was in Kansas City. Um, right now it's housed in Kansas City, but it's a four-day conference and festival featuring folk music really from around the world. People from around the world travel for this festival. Mm -hmm. And so both of our offices are sponsors of the Oklahoma Room. And um, that's a room dedicated to highlighting all of our Oklahoma artists. And so Lauren Barth, of course, performed um, this year. And so it's really, honestly, it's one of the most popular rooms in the entire festival. How was it, Lauren? It was so fun. I mean, it's you're right. It is one of the most popular rooms. Like, we'd have late night jams till five in the morning, and the room was totally packed. It's like everyone, when they were done with their own showcases, would come to the Oklahoma room. Tell it's David the hang. what time it started. What's that? What time does the Oklahoma room kick in at night? Well, they do a <laughs> few things during the day. There's like a short period, maybe between like two and four, and then everything starts at 10 p.m. Yeah. So it's like 10 p.m. to 4 a.m. basically. Very nice. That's a, yeah. that's a full day it's for a you. Long night. It's a whole lot of party. It was mm -hmm. it was amazing. <laughs> but the days are packed with um, panel sessions and mentoring sessions, which this year our office went to sponsor. Um, there were I counted there were over seven, 700 different little mentor sessions because there were seven minutes each. So I added them all up, but. Um, these great uh, music industry delegates that had one-on-one -on -one little mentor sessions with our artist, um, and um, that was really uh, that's is you don't get that you know anywhere you don't just get that anywhere. It was really a neat thing that that folk offered this year. And then there's um, networking events throughout the day. I mean, it's just a great place, and it's all housed in one venue in one conference center. So it's not like you're running all over town. Um, Makes it nice and convenient like too. Like in Austin, you know, it's everything is in one place, so it's a, it's a great it's a great thing, yeah. Well, Tava, let's back up just a second. Uh, sure. We mentioned that this is kind of a, a monthly recap we do with uh, Tava Soski from the Oklahoma Film and Music Office. And last time we spoke, it may have been before Sundance, but anyway, we were certainly talking some films. What have you been up to this year? Well, yeah, we are. We've uh, been busy. We've been a little <laughs> busy. Yeah, it's it's, uh, it's taking its toll, but no. Um, we have had a, a great first, I guess, almost quarter, yeah. really, right? Um, so I believe we spoke early February, right before I was going to Kansas City for Folk. Okay. And um, we had two films, uh, one called Overexposed and one called Southern Christmas that was wrapping um, in January. And I don't remember how much we talked about those, but um, they, were, they both utilized the rebate. Um, they, uh, uh, they filmed in... Oklahoma City and Guthrie area, I think, for those two. And then since then, we've had, I think, three more that have actually been pre-qualified to um, in, in our rebate queue. And we just had one called Jurassic Games that just started filming last Friday. So um, as far as film, there's a lot of activity. There's a lot going on. I mean, literally, crews are just, as they have been for the past three years that I've been here, they're just going from one project to another, and even then, they're overlapping, which is really great. So it's putting our crews uh, uh, to work and all of our support services. I think everyone's pretty happy about that. And you know, we're we're in legislative session, and um, I did a big thank you and a big shout out in our newsletter in March, and I just wanted to say that publicly, is that uh, no bills made it anywhere, made any had any traction. Um, regarding our rebate program so thank you <laughs> and we're just using our rebate program well which is what we're supposed to do so we're we're proud about that right, very nice a good recap and a good update there Tava Sofsky from the Oklahoma Film and Music Office I had heard a little bit of something on Facebook from Jurassic Games that sounds interesting as I'm sure every film you hear about here in Oklahoma you're like 
Hmm, I wonder where they're filming at, you know? Right. Well, we can't tell you those things. No, this particular and I try film. every month. <laughs> Last, a couple of months ago, it was uh, Enid when Jake Gyllenhaal was here at the Walmart. She was like, Dave, don't, no, you can't right. say that. Well, we have to protect their privacy. <laughs> fair um, enough, fair enough. And so they can get their work done. But uh, Ryan Belgart is directing. Uh, he's done several projects here. And um, he's a, a true talent. We're excited to see how this comes out. He. Um, he says this is a, a cross between a Hunger Games and a Jurassic Park, so go figure. I'm excited to Sounds see it. Sounds interesting. And he's, he's utilizing um, some of our beautiful locations around the state, including some state parks. Nice. I'll just say that. But um, So it's going to show off some of our great locations in Oklahoma. Um, I wanted to also mention, uh, since we met, is March 3rd, we had our second annual film-focused networking and mentoring series which was at the Paramount. And um, we had Harvey Lowry, who directed Southern Christmas, and Kelly Kay, which was one of the producers. They were our guest speakers. It was a packed house. We did a, a Facebook live stream. Uh, good thinking. Um, and so if you didn't get a chance to uh, tune in that night or haven't seen the, the footage yet, go on and look at it. I mean, it was, they re truly gave some great mentor um, advice to our, I mean, t it was a packed room. It was incredible. We're so um, thrilled and we couldn't do those things without all of our, our wonderful Studio Oklahoma partners. But um, so that was a big success. And then we'll follow up in the fall with a music focused event. Um, and then I wanted to also mention coming up, it's the last weekend of this month. I believe it's Friday and Saturday, um, the 31st and the 1st down at OCCC. We're partnering with Dead Center again for a tech fair. So it's anything tech for film. Um, you can go down and like there's going to be. lighting. Yeah. Stuff exactly. like that? Exactly. Huh, yeah. Cool. And they've got some great um, guest speakers coming in. Um, it's going to be great. So check our website and our newsletter um, and our social media for all those great little events coming up. Very nice. Abby, we'll bring you back in before we uh, toss over to Lauren for some music. Um, What's upcoming this spring and summer up in Tulsa? Sure. So um, similar to what Tava's office um, provides twice a year, we do a monthly film and music mixer and panel okay. series. Um, we partner with the Woody Guthrie Center up in Tulsa as well as Circle Cinema and um, host our filmmakers and musicians and we really invite everyone from around the state. Our panelists usually include everybody. Um, but then upcoming, actually May is really busy. Well, April we have an architecture and design film festival cool. and then in May we have Tulsa Overground Music and Film festival we have miss fest an all-female led music festival um, we have uh, what miss the fest miss fest that's yes nice. um, <laughs> that's at river parks west and then we end the month with hop jam which is really one of the largest music and beer festivals in the state and it's uh, it's a lot of fun we have they have about 40 different breweries from around the world come into town and just the entire Brady Arts District um, host all these tents full of beer so it's great it's a great day it's good stuff. Yeah. Uh, the Tulsa Film Music Office uh, Arts, let me say that again, the Tulsa <laughs> Office of Film Music Arts and Culture, their website at uh, tulsafmac.com. Trying to get Tulsa FMAC to catch on because right. it's, it's very long. Hashtag yeah. Tulsa FMAC. <laughs> yes, thank you, Dave. Yes. Lauren, where are you from? I'm from LA. Uh, LA, what got you from LA to Tulsa? Uh, the amazing music scene. Oh, Ooh. okay. It really did, yeah. It's affordable, it's beautiful, and I have a lot of opportunities to make music and play, and I've been able to achieve a lot in this town that I couldn't do before. Um, how long have you been playing? When did you first pick up a guitar? And do you play other instruments? I do. M guitar is mainly my writing tool, but I play bass and I play mandolin and things with strings I can usually figure out. <laughs> sure. I started playing guitar when I was 10. So. Okay had it for a while, 20 years. You find that um, some musicians are like, hey, I, I write with a keyboard. You're like, I write with a guitar. Always, yeah. Always a guitar. Mm -hmm. How would you describe your style? And do you have mm. multiple styles? What's that? Do you have multiple styles? I hate to ask any musician I know, to like yeah. pinpoint, you know, label yourself. It's really hard. It's like when people ask, what, what's an artist you sound like? I'm like, I don't really know. But because any, most musicians, creative types, absorbed from multiple sources and multiple artists. Right. I'm definitely trying to 
be as unique as possible and still nod to all my influences. So I'd, I'd say it's folk music, definitely, but it's, it's kind of modern. So in my new record, we have a full band and there's definitely some rock and roll elements to it, some country, some, you know, more laid back, kind of like JJ Kale grooves that I definitely was inspired from living in Tulsa. And yeah, but generally it's folk music. Well, I like the word influences. Who is influencing you these days with? These days? Well, a lot of the local musicians in Tulsa are definitely really inspiring to me. Um, and also just the rich kind of musical history, you know, and listening to old Leon Russell records and J.J. Kale records and kind of digging into the songwriters from Tulsa as well, Hoyt Axton and all those guys who were being covered by all these big artists, but a lot of people don't know who they are. So it's really, it's really fun. Lauren, where can we find more of your music and do you have upcoming shows that people could catch you at? I do. Um, May 5th at the Colony in Tulsa is gonna be my album release okay. show and party. And uh, yeah, definitely make it to that one. And you can find my music at my website, laurenbarth.com. She is Lauren Barth. She is about to perform for us. And Lauren, what do you have for us today? Uh, this is a new song. It's called Lord of the Lake. It's all you, Lauren. Thank you. I 
surged high and low through the riverlands for you. Well, greetings to your father. I followed a bright star to you. Take my place on a throne beneath the water to take your place when death comes for you. To take your place when all oh, death comes for you. It comes for me too. Beautiful stuff there by Lauren Barth. Lauren, thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Um, we appreciate you coming all the way from Tulsa to perform. No problem. <laughs> the uh, new album uh, releases here in a few weeks. LaurenBarth.com, I believe, is the website, correct? Mm -hmm. Got all it. All sorts of music, tour, and media information, as long as, as well as some social media contacts uh, for Lauren as well. Uh, Kia B, maybe? Oh, I have no idea. No Capos. idea. Capos. I, I was looking at the Capos. I was like, do you typically capo up and play. I capo in super weird places and then that's super fun until I have a band behind me and they're like what key is this in and I'm like yeah yeah as, as a fellow musician in the back part of the band I'm like really you're capoing where I know and I'm a bass player too so it's like I'm a jerk <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry guys <laughs> Teva you always bring in the most fun conversations I appreciate Aww, that thank you so much for having us this was fun thanks, thanks to Abby and Lauren for coming in from Tulsa it was a lot of fun. Yeah, That'd be great to catch guys. up. Good yeah. to see you again. Best of luck in Tulsa. Many thanks. Again, TulsaFMAC.com for more information. And uh, David, we'll catch up with you next month. Sounds great. Appreciate it. All right. Thanks, David.